please visit sleepapia.org to get more videos like this one, as well as audio and blog content. Register at sleepapnea.org to be included in the conversation and updated whenever new programs are available. Thanks for joining us and enjoy. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kevin Bradley, and this is another one of our speaker series. And our topic tonight is basically looking at some of our social media platforms and looking at some of the questions that people typically ask and how we can respond to those. So I'm delighted to have Teresa Schumard with me, who's I always call my voice of reason and who's a real expert in the field. Uh, welcome, Teresa. Thank you. How are you? I'm very good. And it's always great to see you and have you on yes, this platform. You too. And um, I think tonight we're going to look at some of the questions because we always look at um, the you know, our awake page, our American Sleep Apnea Association page. And there seems to be typical sometimes a flow of almost the same type of questions and concerns that people have. What are some of the quote unquote trends that you're seeing or concerns that people have? Well, they'll write in and they'll say, well, my, my mask is leaving marks on my face and I don't know what to do. It, they stay there all day. And, you know, so people will come in and they will give their suggestions. And, you know, none of us are doctors, but we've all been through these issues. And sometimes there are some really, really good suggestions on how to make yourself more comfortable with things. And uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of times they're they're getting the the mask marks on their face and they're not going away. And you know, somebody will say, "Well, why don't you try a mask liner?" Or maybe you're pulling the straps too tightly. You know, maybe you need another, you know, fitting or something like that. And they come in with some really good um, suggestions. I think. You know, and you raise a good point, Teresa, when you say we're not doctors. I mean, okay, we're you know, we're in the field and we're part of this organization. But yes, you're right. I mean, I think that the saying you need to go and seek medical advice through your, your practitioner. But, you know, we can share experiences. And I think you and I have discussed this before. I feel that some of our pages are, are you know, we have a great group of people there that are really open to sharing their experiences. And I'm always trying to encourage people to do that because, we all don't experience the same things. Mm -hmm. So we can learn from each other and the whole peer-to-peer -peer support is really valuable and beneficial. So just to add before we go on to other you know, concerns and, and some of the questions that people have, I would encourage people out there, if, you, if you've experienced something that someone else is asking about, chime in there and help them out. Absolutely, because... I mean, this is not a cookie cutter product that you're talking about here. Every face is unique. Every face is different, like a snowflake, you know, might leave a mark on you over here, might leave a mark over here for someone else. Um, maybe their suggestion isn't going to help you, but the whole uh, success with it is just keep trying things. Don't give up. Don't say, well, this, uh, you know. I mean, if you really, um, you know, I lost a, a, a cousin today. That, oh, I'm sorry uh, to hear that. Yeah, and we know that, you know, there needed to be some therapy there, and it was, it's, I can't do it, I can't do it, you know, kind of a situation. So we're real sad about that. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, don't don't leave it go. Just yeah. you know, go to your doctor, talk to your doctor, talk. Talk to other people, you know, come to the support groups online and talk to other people about how you can get more comfortable. You know, and you raise a great point, Teresa, because I remember interviewing someone a while back ago, and um, this lady was actually struggling in the middle of the night with some issues. And we are, you know, we're, we're reaching many corners of the world as you see people coming yeah. and joining our group and you're approving them on our awake group or Facebook group, for mm -hmm. example, but she was able to reach out at 4 a.m. and get responses to something when she was concerned or had an issue. 
So I think that's great. And again, I encourage people to help each other out. Oh, I think yes. for me, you know, and, and you know, with, with your cousin, I'm sorry to hear that. But for me, I, I seem to adhere to my therapy quite easily. But it raises a topic that I see a lot. And it's happened to me. And actually, I've been using CPAP maybe now for about five years. But it's happened to me a few times where I've woken up in the middle of the night and I use the, the nasal um, the silicone nasal mom, but I may have it here, you know, and I, there's something subconsciously that happens in the middle of the night where I do pull my mask off or take it off or slide it up. So I, I see that as a common question as well. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Well, it, it is like anything if there is a fly, for instance, let's talk about it in this way. If there was a fly buzzing around your nose while you're trying to sleep, you would be agitated. You would be, get that away from me, you know. Well, you know, unconsciously, you're, you're, you're having this strange apparatus on your face. But all of a sudden, you know, you're aware of it and it's bugging you and you're not really awake. So you flip it off of your face and... People find them in the covers. <laughs> so it's it, the thing that the thing that should, uh, you know, come to mind is that you're not used to this piece of machinery or this mask. So you should you should definitely check check out uh, these techniques I'm going to talk about. But the first one is so simple. It's a tactile sensation the mask. Hold the mask in your hand. I don't mean put it on the machine or any of that. I mean, put it in your hand and look at it and feel it and touch it and get used to that feeling, whether it's silicone or whether whatever it is, that's your mask. And you need to become very familiar with it. So, so if you have it at your desk, even in the daytime, you want to just, you know, kind of you know, that's a that's a suggestion that I think works very well for the extreme situations of claustrophobia. Then you now you've touched this mask and you've become familiar with what it looks like, what it feels like. Try putting it up to your face while you're doing something relaxing, like watching television, surfing the net, that kind of thing. Um Something that's relaxing, though, nothing like don't be putting on, you know, a scary movie or something, you know, use something that's going to relax you so that you can get kind of used to it. Then you want to take the mask and actually connect it to the machine while you're watching that TV and just put it on and just relax, relax. You, the key to this is relaxation, mindfulness sometimes meditation. Uh, but the more you hold that mask and you practice with that mask, it's going to become less foreign to you. For instance, when you're pulling it off in the middle of the night and worse than that is the, uh, the claustrophobia. That's, it's a really hard one for people to, uh, to come up with, but breathing exercises, all kinds of things and mindfulness very important. I think that's great advice. And you sit for a bit and watch TV, um, sit up and have your mask on and just feel that sensation. I love the idea when you're saying feel the mask as well prior to that, but then connect it to the machine and feel that air going through. So you know what it's like when you're awake. And then sometimes I actually would drift into a sleep and a wave. So, you know, but it, it just got me used to it and acclimatized myself with it really easily. But some people have more difficulty yes. when it's a full mask or it's positional and they're positional and they're lying in bed in a different way. And maybe the mask moves with them and it moves off their face slightly. I've seen people, you know, question that before. And I know there, there are certain pillows out there as well. And I was given one years ago that had little indentations in them that would actually almost mm -hmm. cushion your mask when you lay on mm -hmm. your side, you know? Mm -hmm. So some of those things are interesting. And I think, again, you know, encouraging people to reach out to other people who have seen that can help you overcome these issues. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Teresa, one of the other things I think that we look at as well, when, you know, I'm on the um, pages, like the Awake page, 
I do see a lot of concerns from people that are, have um, issues with pressure. That wasn't really either a concern for me at the start. I mean, I think my pressure is pretty low, but I felt that there's times where even if my mask was positional, you know, I sometimes felt like, yeah, am I breathing against something, you know, when I'm exhaling, which is a weird feeling. And I think sometimes when your mask does become positional during the middle of the night, maybe that's when we do subconsciously rip it off because we yeah. can't suffocate either. Right. So any any pearls of wisdom there? I think it's it still goes back to just, you know, be sure that your mask is fitting well, be sure that you're comfortable with it. Then if it becomes a jar because you have changed positions, you know, uh, and you do feel that sense of suffocation, you know, just be cognizant of that and, you know, replace it again and just, uh, you know, carry on and try to relax and go back to sleep. And I mean, I think for me, you know, I used to actually, before I started my CPAP therapy, I used to, it would only occur to me a few years ago, I actually just, just lay in my back and that's where I would have most apneic um, oh, absolutely. episodes, of course. <laughs> but when I wear my therapy, when my mask's on, I, I've always just snuggled on my side and I never lay on my back. And I feel that when I did lay on my back, it was almost to open up my airway to try and get air into my lungs. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So be cognizant. That could be an issue as well. And the reason I'm saying that is because I have seen as well other pillows that are almost like a big right angle where you snuggle and hug and you're on your mm -hmm. side. So mm -hmm. For someone like that, I feel that could help. Oh, absolutely. There are all kinds of things out there. Uh, nowadays, uh, I see them online all the time, you know, little gadgets that somebody came up with, be probably because they wore a CPAP and they needed something. Uh, I, my favorite one are the, uh, the hose management systems that they have, um, hose management systems and say, say that your mask comes down this way, you know, onto your chest while you're sleeping well, they do have them where they'll go up or they'll pivot. That's that's wonderful. But sometimes it's just tangling in everything, in your sheets, in your comfort or whatever. And so they have these things that actually stand over the bed and hold the hose up. I thought those were, were very interesting yeah, uh, devices to have. Yeah, People uh, used to in the old days before we had all the good stuff, um, they would just hook it on the bed post or something if they had that. So, of course, yeah, of course. I mean, whatever works. And again, share it, you know, if you yeah. think it works, you know, you reminded me and I wanted to go back to the idea of um, of the marks on your face. Right. And one time I was at my DME or, you know, the place I go to where I get my readings read, I get new supplies. And there was a woman who had just been diagnosed with sleep apnea. And she said to me, you know, you don't use a mask, do you? And I was like, yeah, I actually do. And she's like, well, doesn't it mark your face? And I'm like, not really. You know, it's a strap. Sometimes I wake up, but they, they go away. Um, but it's certainly I've had that strap pulled too tight and I've woken up with maybe it's sitting under my eye and, you know, we, we kind of see that mark, but it's not a permanent thing. But um, and then the other thing that she said is like, well, what do you do about your hair? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not concerned about my hair. I, you know, it's OK. We can manage the hair every day. Yeah. So, you know, some people it's a it's a. It's a concern and it's an image and I'm not diminishing their concerns. Don't get me wrong when I giggle about this because they're legitimate for people and sure. nobody wants to walk around with strap marks, for example, or, you know, a bad hair day. Um, so I had seen online and you're probably familiar with this as well. That some people had come up with even better cushions and stuff around the face um, that people were using for the marks um, on their face. Are you familiar with any of that, Teresa? Yeah, um, I've seen, um, they're just little pieces of material that sort of 
hitch themselves around the hose or the, the mask uh, straps and they will be Velcroed so that it's, it's, it's giving that, you know, softness next to the, to the skin. Um, and also um, there, there are the, also those mask liners that go, you know, just, you just put it on the top of the, you know, on the mask and then put that to your skin. Some people even cut up an old t-shirt and just make it the size of, because, you know, every, for every mask, there's going to be a specific model of, of, uh, of those things. And there are plenty of companies out there that, that sell those. You just have to look them up online, mask liners. So, so, you know, when you say mask these days and you do an internet search, it means something very different than, uh, than, uh, we are talking about tonight, but Yo, you know, that's that, really funny you say that, Teresa, because my next point was going to be maskne. You know, that's the new word. And basically, it's a lot of people now are concerned with they're wearing masks all day, meaning, you know, the, the um, either N95 or type one type or level one or level two masks in work. And for myself as well, if I'm at the COVID assessment center, for example, I'm in a mask all day. Thankfully, I haven't developed maskiny, but it's basically a lot of people are breaking out in little pimples along the mask line. And, you know, I think we did talk about this before one time where um, we were doing a session. And again, uh, you know, that is a concern for people and um, because I wouldn't want it. But, you know, it's almost like sometimes the regime at night is like, you know, do make sure you're you're cleaning your mask properly. And it is clean all mm-hmm. around the surface that's touching your Absolutely. skin. Absolutely. And your face is clean as well before you go to bed, you know? That's one of the best things to do to prevent leaks around your mask is make sure that your skin is cleaned before you put the mask on and uh, make sure that the part of the mask that touches the skin is washed daily. I know they, you know, some people maybe only wash their mask once a week and that's okay you know you're the only one wearing it and all these things but if you're having any kind of sensitivity it could be you know the natural oils on your face being blocked so just you know try the try the washing a lot of people say that i i bet i bet i've had 10 people say that on on the awake support group um, you know, we were talking about something just a little bit ago about the COVID, and I wanted to remind everybody that, you know, a lot of people have lost insurance coverage and everything is just crazy right now with COVID. And for people that cannot afford a mask, a CPAP mask, there's uh, the Awake Angels program at uh, ASAA. You can just go to our website at sleepapnea.org. And uh, become an awake angel and you can uh, donate uh, for the program fee uh, of $25. Someone will be able to have a mask for free. So think about that. That's a a nice thing. Yeah, that's a really great gesture because, you know, you're right. And I mean, even during these times as well, I would be due to have my machine looked at. Um, look at my AHI, even though I can keep an eye on it myself, um, and get supplies. And thankfully, I've always been a little bit ahead, uh, meaning like I do have a, a, an always a spare mask and tubing, at least one or two um, in case I, I travel or anything happens. But because of COVID, the, the, the office had been closed and it hasn't been open since March, I guess. I'm hoping now that maybe by September, um, you know, I can get in there, but that's a great, great opportunity for donation. You know, a donation of $25 will help somebody get a mask, which is great. Absolutely. You know? It's great. It's a great so, program. We're really lucky. Plug, and people yeah. are so grateful to get them. Um, of course, yeah. of course. You know, and when we're talking about this now, this leads me to another topic. And Justine, Justine Amder had done a great um video or presentation on how to clean your machine and mask. And I used to get a lot of questions about that at the start. I feel when our group was pretty new or when I joined, there was a lot of um, 
how do I clean it? What's the best solution? I've seen some scary things out there and advice. And, you know, as much as I feel as well, you know, go do offer advice, but make sure it's good advice. And sometimes we have to interrupt and say, no, maybe bleach isn't the greatest idea to use. So, yeah. you know, tell me your advice, Teresa. I have always just used mild soap and water for the mask. For the hose, I will put vinegar in a in a tub and just let it sort of soak around and uh, just clean them, keep the mask clean. Put it on a fresh towel, let it dry. It's ready for you that night, and uh, it costs nothing. I, I remember one time I had a, a a man say when I was trying to you know coach him for you know CPAP usage uh he uh he said that he couldn't he couldn't have time for that that he you know he didn't have time there was just no way in the morning he could do that and i said well if nothing else you would take a shower right put it in the shower with you and just give it a little you know it's better than nothing it's what i yeah. said so and i don't know if he liked that or not but i said it anyway <laughs> I mean, above all, to be fair, right, I I don't clean, I don't do that every day, right? But I do empty the chamber. So I think mm -hmm. it's important that water isn't stagnant in a chamber as well. So mm -hmm. every week I do what you said, you know, I put my humidifier chamber in there, in the vinegar, soapy water, mm -hmm. let it sit, rinse it out. And of course, use distilled water as well, because you won't get that build up. And Absolutely. There's times when mm -hmm. I have traveled where I have had to use tap water. And it's amazing the, the build up you get in the yeah. bottom of the, the humidifier, right? Mm -hmm. But definitely, you know, I, I um, do that every week. And, and you're right, the hose with the vinegar and some um, washing liquid. But I think it's important not to have water stagnant and have fresh water. No, definitely not. No, you know. No. All kinds of things can grow in there and cause you terrible yeah. infection. Definitely, definitely. And I mean, I think, you know, there, there are certain wipes that we have here and they're quote unquote baby wipes, but they're not because you're not really supposed to use baby wipes on the silicone. But the ones I'm able to get here are actually, you know, they're, they're, they're flushable for a sense, and, and they're not that chemical that'll destroy the, yeah. the, the silicone coating. So, you know, at the very least as well, it's good to clean around the nose area that goes in mm -hmm. here and, of course, the straps. So you're not getting breakouts as well, and, and there's mm -hmm. not grease built up because it's amazing after a, a quote-unquote deep clean how, how fresh and good you're your therapy feels that that night when you use it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Teresa, this actually brings another point, and I've actually been experiencing this recently, which is sort of new for me, but I think I know why, because you'd sent some, you know, tips and questions and, and, and answers. But I am getting a little bit of a water in my tube recently, and, you know, it's the summer, but it's weird that, you know, in the summer we have our air conditioning on to the point where I wake up freezing some night. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, this is very hot outside. It might be 30-something degrees. But does it really need to be 17 in the bedroom? But, <laughs> so, you know, we do see water build up in the, in the tubes. And what, what kind of advice do you give there? Well, you know, that's uh, that's the condensation that happens when that cool air is coming from the machine. And uh, the, in, in the sleep biz, they call that rain out. And you'll hear the tube gurgling and what's going on? You know, why, why do I have this? And it actually could come up and, you know, get you. The water can just travel up there. So, you know, when that happens, you know, they have these really... Uh, nice uh, pieces of equipment. They're not equipment. They're fabric covers for your hose. Uh, also, heating the hose will help. If you have a, a heated uh, hose piece, that will help. Uh, they make the hoses that are just heated, period. You don't even have to do anything. They're plugged in. Um, but these, these little uh, things that go around the 
hose that are just made of cotton or some sort of material. And it keeps things warmer because, uh, you know, it, it keeps it, it keeps it, the temperature, you know, at the right place for hopefully your home, you know? So, you know, and I got it. Stop. The first, the, sorry, the, the first time it happened, yeah, I was like, what is this noise? Because you're right. It does rattle. And there's this, D -d 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 -d, you know, as the air is coming through and I'm like, what is that? And then I could feel it then. And my nose, you know, it was coming through. So yeah. I think it's basically that disconnect from the, the humidification in the chamber to the mm -hmm, temperature mm -hmm. that's going on in the room. And you're right, it cre creates some condensation. Depending as well where I have my machine, obviously, you know, can influence it, I feel. And I think there was a time where maybe my bedside locker was a little bit higher than I was. So the tendency, obviously, is gravity. It's going to go down if it gets into your tube. Right. So I do keep it a little bit lower now than my bed, and then the tube comes up. So that helps alleviate it to a sense, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that's good as well. The other thing that I, I it sort of raised a point to me as well, and I know, you know, you, you brought that up before and we have talked about that and, and we touched on it a little bit earlier on, but I feel it's important and it is leaks that happen, right? And it's leaks around your mask, even my nose piece. If it's not sitting perfect or sitting to a point, you know, I'm not getting that, um, I'm not getting the advantage basically of the what pressure. the therapy is mm -hmm. used for. So I feel that most of the, the people's concerns are those that are wearing the full mask. Is that what you're seeing? Um, well, yeah, sometimes it depends on, it depends on the face. It depends on the situation. Like I said before, everybody's face is different and everybody's going to, uh, you know, experience something different with a different type of mask. I always say to a person, if they're having, you know, a lot of leaks, but they love their mask, go up or down a size, you know, whichever you think is going to be best. And make sure that when you are being fitted for a new mask or for a new size of mask, maybe you just want to order one. You know, you want to say, I'm going to go for a smaller one. Okay. So you did that. But if you have the opportunity to... You know, go and change, you know, the mask or, you know, and you're going to be fitted for it. Or if it's your first time to be uh, wearing CPAP, make sure that uh, if you wear dentures, that you wear those. If you wear them at night during sleep, you should wear them for the fitting. If you don't, though, which many people do not, those should be taken. Is think about how much that changes facial structure with or without dentures. And that could have been the case. Maybe, you know, things are sunken in if they took the dentures out. I don't know. But I always say that, uh, you know, you know, it's your life. And I know sometimes, you know, you might have to pay out of pocket, but um, it's, it's something that is for your life. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely, of course. And it's not to be underrated or looked mm -hmm. over. And it's not a, a decision that's taken lightly or, you know, and, and you know, that's sort of when you're talking about that one mask doesn't fit all. Of mm -hmm. course. So you're right. You have to be comfortable with what's good for you, giving you the Optimus therapy, of course, you know. But, um, you know, the other thing that I, I thought of is as well, you know, some people had concerns about masks. And I think I've interviewed people in the past as well. And they really stuck with it. And they were like, this didn't work for me. And then, you know, I'm a mouth breather. So I tried a chin strap, for example. Or, you know, then I tried the nose piece here or the full mask. So, again, you know, you're right. It may cost a little bit. But at the end of the day, you want good results and good therapy. No, it's different here in Canada. I mean, I guess, you know, in the States, sometimes, you know, I, I don't know even if I had to make choices as well. I'm, I'm given certain masks under my insurance and they're, you know, mm -hmm. given every six months or five months, whatever. But uh, if I wanted to deviate from something else, it's, um, you know, it'll cost me, which sometimes that's worth the investment, which leads me to think as well, it 
a lot of people are, you know, concerned about whether they have a sinus infection or when they have a sinus infection or they have a cold or flu. Should they really be using their therapy or not? Yes, they should be. The thing of it is, is that they, if they're wearing a nasal mask or a nasal pillows mask interface, they should think about having something a little extra on the side for those times when they do have a cold. And that would be the full face mask. Then you can breathe no matter if your mouth is open or not. And you have to open your mouth if your nose is blocked. You have to breathe somehow. So you're going to do that naturally. So now let it go. Let the mouth open all, you know, so you can breathe with the full face mask. And, you know, just keep it. Keep it around for a spare for those times where maybe the dog chewed your other mask, you know, and you have to, you know, you have to do something until your mask arrives again. So, you know, it's, I think it's always a good idea to have a spare <laughs> and the full face mask. You know, I don't think that people gravitate to that one at first because it is so much bigger, but, you know, I think, I think, you know, I like having an extra one around, you know, is for that reason. <laughs> and, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you know you've had a good restful night's sleep, you don't want to go back to that feeling of not, right? Yeah. And you're right. I mean, and this is no. a topic a few years ago for me, and that's why I invested in one, because I thought, mm -hmm. okay, mine's is a nasal pillow or now the nasal silicone, you know, tube that goes underneath Mm -hmm. But if my, you're right, if my nose is is um, blocked, then I'm obviously going to be breathing through my nose, my mouth, but I need that therapy still, you know, or I'm Absolutely. just going to be And, you know, again, that raises another topic when we're looking at emergency situations, for example, and with hurricane season coming and we've got tropical storms here, the the up there as well so you know it's always suggested as well to make sure that you've got a backup for your machine mm -hmm. and I, I remember one lady we did interview as well had one that she did have when maybe i think she lived in florida and there was a power outage but um do, what's your experience with that because to be quite honest i don't have that um but that's something i should look into um, well, the battery packs that are available, um, they can be quite costly, but they, you know, for people that have frequent outages, I mean, there again, it, it's, it's for your, for your health, you know, you want to wear it. Um, I mean, campers take them, you know, take them with them and, you know, they, they just budgeted that into the, to the, uh, the hobby, but, um, I think I think that that's that it's wise, you know, that you you have something like that because if you don't and you don't have a generator and you don't, you know, what are you going to do? Are you just going to be feeling like that for days and days? And maybe you have you know things to clean up in the yard because there was a bad storm, and you know you're not going to feel like doing that. Uh, try to keep everything normal if you can. I know sometimes easier said than done. I've seen people on different forums uh, where they have ways to hook it up to their car batteries. And I, I don't know how to do any of that, but other, you know, there are ways that people, you know, have to do that worth looking up. Again, be creative and, and share your experience out there on our, on our um, social network groups and, and ASAA page. But you know, I think it is, I think one of the guys, Ben, that we interviewed before, he goes camping and he did have a battery pack, you're right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something I think that, you know, is probably worth considering as the season comes along for many people where mm -hmm. power outages are, you know, happening all around. So good, good advice. Teresa, anything else? I mean, I feel like we could talk a lot about some of the questions and concerns that people have. And maybe this is a worthwhile um, topic or a conversation doing again for our speaker series. But because there's other issues that I feel that are, you know, we could go even more deeper into. And some of it that um, I, I think we can touch on another time is like, you know, 
obstructive sleep apnea versus central sleep apnea seems Absolutely. to be a huge concern for people. Absolutely. Um, so BiPAP versus, you know, CPAP mm-hmm. and stuff like that and regulating pressures and what do I do and I can't, can't get used to it. And always the advice is, you know, go back to your, your prescribing or your DME. Go back to your physician. Say this is not working. Don't give up. You know, mm-hmm. keep at it and it'll get better. Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's not anybody's fault if something is not working for you that you were prescribed. You just have to keep a good spirit about it and keep moving forward with your therapy. It's this is something that you can do something about by wearing this. And, you know, I just encourage people to stay treated. It's been really nice talking to you tonight. (laughs) <laughs> Kevin, I don't get to talk to you very often. I know, and I feel I haven't in a while, and it's always great to have you on board, and you, you've mm-hmm. got a wealth of knowledge and, and just great advice out there for people, and, and I'm sure anytime I see responses from you on our page, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, they're, they're well-received, and it can generate conversation and, mm-hmm. and throw little tidbits out to people, so it's great. It's great work, Teresa, that you're doing. Um, we we and, love we love our patients. <laughs> yeah, and we want to help each other. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, you know, like again, I I can't say I have this. We're not you or I or Justine and Adam or other people on you know our our um the ASAA have maybe we're looking at this more you know in depth than other people and researching things like topics that we've done. But I'm not going to sit here and claim that I'm an expert on, you know, good <laughs> therapy and overcoming situations. So we need that peer-to-peer support and we need Absolutely. perspectives, you know. Mm-hmm. So we'll do it again. Okay. And um, can you think of anything else that maybe we missed? And I know you did send out some great topics, um, but I, I also want to draw people to our frequently asked questions on the yes. American Sleep Apnea Association page, um, which I've looked at numerous times in the past, and it's it's always great um, advice in there. So check that out. Um, it's uh, www.sleepapnea.org um, slash sleep health hyphen frequently asked or FAQ. I'm sure Trees has been a big contributor to that. <laughs> Um, one thing as well I wanted to mention, and Teresa, we always get excited about this because whether you want to believe it or not, this is August. So next month is Sleep Timber. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were talking to Justine earlier on, just before we came on, and there's a lot of things happening. So there is some focused conversations that's going to occur, and um, in the month of September, and it's basically looking at some of our um, co-occurring conditions. So, meaning, I know we've done some topics on heart failure, diabetes, hypertension. So, we're going to look more, we're going to look at um, interviewing some experts on some of these topics so that we can look at the uh, correlation between sleep apnea and some of these co-occurring conditions. Anything else that's happening that's exciting, Teresa, that I've missed? No, I think you've gotten it. Yeah. So, again, we encourage people to participate, sign up, um, share your wealth of knowledge as well and your experience. And um, we look forward to a fun-packed informational month in sleep timber. And... um, yeah, anything else, We when this goes live, we will usually be in the wings. And if anybody has other topics or, you know, situations or concerns or things that they want to hear us address, then we're happy to, Teresa. Aren't we always? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, <laughs> so I'll leave you with some closing remarks, Any? Well, I just say... Uh... Stay safe, everybody out there. Wear your CPAP. And if you have problems, be sure and reach out to us. Uh, We have a group on Facebook called Awake Sleep Health. You just type that in and you'll get to us. Answer a few questions and get in. We have the forum on sleepapnea.org. 
Uh, there's always somebody there to help. And you can also get in touch with the ASAA at the phone number on our webpage. So, thank so as you. we go on in this journey, there are just more and more resor- resources available to people. And, you know, again, the, the AWAKE page I always find is really valuable and sharing information and please contribute. And um, you see that as well, Teresa. I see, you know, members joining every week from all corners yeah. of the world and all yeah. disciplines and all experiences and people are, you know, CPAP users, people are in the industry, people are just, you know, are carers for someone with sleep apnea. So it's great. We welcome Mm -hmm. everybody. Okay. So until the next time, we look forward to um, being with you again. And again, um, be mindful that, um, you know, wear your mask, wear your therapy and um, yeah, take good care of yourself and each other. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for joining us today. Be an awake angel and you can help those financially impacted by COVID-19. Just $50 can provide two CPAP masks to someone in need. Please visit sleepapnea.org slash donate for details. The ASAA is a patient-focused organization. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube page, join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or sleepapnea.org and you can join the conversation. It's all free.